none of us really appreciate how vital our eyes are until they fail. Over half of all blindness in Australia is caused by retinal damage, such as macular degeneration. Using technology from the highly successful bionic ear, this tiny chip could bring hope to those left in the dark. The technology is developed now to the point where it's really um, small enough and miniaturised enough to be able to fit inside the eye. D -O -V -H -R Today, I'm getting my eyes tested, but not by an optometrist. D -Y -K? How'd I go? That's excellent. You're in the normal range. Oh, no, that's a relief. I don't have to eat any more carrots. Electronic engineers are making sure my vision is normal before I test drive bionic vision. Compared to standard human vision, the sorts of vision that we've seen in current implants is very low resolution. So what kind of image will blind people see when their implants are switched on? I'm about to find out. I'm not allowed to use my hands, am I? This maze may look simple, but not through my eyes. Looks like a corridor coming down this way. And hang on, what's happening here? I... OK, there's a corridor going that way too. What I'm seeing is a very low resolution image made up of black and white dots, which change in unusual ways as I move. Hang on, what's going on here? The bionic eye will look nothing like what I'm wearing. A small camera on a pair of glasses will communicate with a tiny chip implanted in the retina. Electrodes on the implant will turn the visual information into electrical impulses, which can be passed on to the visual cortex by surviving neurons. Now, the sort of image that people receive is, in fact, quite different. With electrical stimulation, um, people perceive what are called phosphenes. These are sort of flashes of light in the visual field. Each electrode can deliver one phosphine, or pixel if you like. So with 100 electrodes on the first implant, the visual information will be very limited. The challenge is to process the data in the most useful way. Our task is to choose the information from those um, high resolution image streams to make sure that we're able to provide excellent navigation and mobility. By changing the intensity of the phosphenes, researchers are finding different ways to encode nearby objects and depict depth, distance, brightness and contrast. That doesn't look right. What's that black thing in front of me? That's... Uh... Uh... It looks like something floating in space or... It's a box. Who did that? OK. <laughs> this isn't as, as easy for me. How normal-sighted people like me adapt to different simulations is key to deciding what representations work the best. It's another corner. Uh, it's a U corner. It's a hairpin. It's a handbrake turn. Wow, this is brilliant. All right. And... You're finished. Done. How did you find it? That was really interesting. It's a little disorientating, but I could make out that there were these corridors and, and I remember that box. <laughs> you put that up there to trick me and I think I got away with it. <laughs> the first retinal implant in 2013 should allow blind people basic navigational capabilities, with later versions allowing facial recognition and reading. All this and some fetching specs. This is the future for the bionic eye.